Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video, we're going to go over a little bit of a different example uh, compared to what we normally do. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, let's get started. So in our real world example today, let's say uh, we are bird watchers and we are looking for the cedar waxwing. Uh, that is this lovely bird here. And we do a little bit of research and we find out that its song uh, is between 6 and 8 kilohertz. Now before we became bird watchers uh, we wasted a bit of our lives doing an engineering degree uh, and in that degree we did a signal processing course and we remembered that there's filters that we can create to look for specific frequencies. So we get ourselves a microphone and we're gonna write ourselves a little filter and then we're gonna feed that into our computer and hopefully we should be able to leave that and it will automatically detect when there's a cedar waxwing in the area chirping away. So let's get started. Firstly we know that the song of the bird is between 6 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz. So we already know that there's a specific range that we need to search for so we need to use a bandpass filter. The next thing that we remember is that there was a specific type of filter called a Butterworth filter and a second order Butterworth filter had the transfer function T of S of 1 divided by S squared plus root 2 S plus 1. And then because we have a really good memory, we also remembered that the transformation to go from a low pass to a band pass filter is S becomes QC and then inside brackets S divided by omega naught plus omega naught divided by S where QC can be given by omega naught divided by our bandwidth and where omega naught is given by the square root of our lower limit w1 multiplied by our upper limit w2 okay so we have all of the elements here that we need to be able to create our bandpass filter so before we go any further let's convert our 6 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz into radians per second for our omega 1 and our omega 2 values Converting from hertz to radians per second is simply multiplying by 2 pi. Therefore, 6 kilohertz times by 2 pi is equal to 37.7k radians per second. And that's equal to our omega 1, because it is our lower cutoff frequency. Then we can calculate our upper cutoff frequency, which is 8 kilohertz times by 2 pi which is equal to 50.265 k radians per second and that's equal to our omega 2 okay so now that we have omega 1 and omega 2 we can calculate our omega naught that's simply the square root of 50.265 k times by 37.7 k and that's equal to 43.531k radians per second. And that's equal to omega naught. Firstly, let's quickly calculate our bandwidth. BW is equal to our upper limit, 50,265 minus our lower limit, 37,700. And that's equal to 12,565. Okay, so now we have omega naught, we have our bandwidth, we can calculate our QC value, and then we can sub that in to our original S transformation, and then we can convert our low pass second order Butterworth filter into a band pass filter, and hopefully then we'll be able to detect those birds. So let's calculate QC now. QC is equal to omega naught which is 43,531 divided by our bandwidth which is 12,565 and that's equal to 3.46446 we might do a little bit of rounding with that later just probably don't want to write that out over and over <clears throat> now we have our S transformation S is equal to 3.46 times by 
S divided by omega naught, which is 43,531 plus 43,531 divided by S. Okay, so let's make the substitution into our original transfer function now. I'm just going to warn you now, the next bit's going to be a little bit ugly and there's going to be quite a bit of algebra to it. I'm not sure how many steps we're going to go through yet, but hopefully it'll all make sense for you. Now, let's make the substitution. Remember, our original transfer function, t of s, is equal to 1 divided by s squared plus root 2s plus 1. Now let's sub s into our equation. That gives us 1 divided by 3.46 multiplied by s divided by 43,531 plus 43,531 divided by s and then all of that is squared plus root 2 times 3.46 and then all that mess inside the brackets again, s divided by 43,531 plus 43,531 divided by s. And then all of that has plus 1 at the end, and we've got our equation. No, not really. We're going to have to do a little bit more algebra before we can finish up here. The first thing I'd like to do is expand the brackets. So, for the squared term, uh, it's essentially just using FOIL, uh, however, I'm probably not going to go through that, it's a little bit ugly for now, uh, so I'll probably just give us the value. So that will give us 1 divided by, let's give ourselves a lot of space because this one will be pretty long, and remember, this is our new T of S, and that's equal to 12 divided by 43,531 multiplied by s squared plus 24 plus 12 times 43,531 squared divided by s squared and then all of that is from our original s squared term now we can easily distribute this over the brackets plus 4.89 and that's simply multiplying the square root of 2 by 3.46 divided by 43,531 and then all of that's multiplied by s plus and then distributing our 4.89 times 43,531 gives us 213,280 divided by s plus 1 Okay, so it might not look like it now, but that was a huge step to make. The only thing we have to do now is normalize our equation. So, our highest s power term in our denominator has a coefficient of 1, just as we've done previously. We can firstly do that by multiplying by s squared through the whole equation. That will give us s squared, because 1 multiplied by s squared is s squared, divided by 12, divided by... 43,531 times s to the power of 4 now plus let's collect some like terms here our 24 and our 1 can simply become 25 s to the power of 2 plus 12 times this mess here again 43,531 squared and remember, as we're multiplying by s squared, this s squared will cancel, and that will now become our s to the power of 0 term, plus 4.89 divided by 43,531, and now that s becomes s to the power of 3, plus 213,286. Our s will cancel, and we'll be left with 1s. Okay. So now, there's only really one step left to do, and that's to divide through by 12 divided by 43,531. Sorry guys, just realize this should be squared here, and it should also be squared there. Okay, so let's, let's continue. Now, 
we'll divide through by 12 divided by 43,531 squared, uh, and then that will give us our final answer. So that's equal to, just as before, nice, nice long line here, 1.579 times 10 to the power of 8. Now I've just used a calculator to do this. Uh, I don't think anyone would ever expect you to do uh, calculations like this by hand. And that's still multiplied by s squared. Doing that for our s to the power of 4 term, this simply cancels to 1 and we're left with s to the power of 4. Plus, while we're doing this, we're going to reorder our s power terms in descending order. So we'll do our s to the power of 3 term next. 4.89 divided by 43,531 divided by this mess here becomes 17,740 s to the power of 3 plus our s to the power of 2 term, which is 25 divided by this mess here. Now you might be wondering at this stage, how come we're creating such large numbers when we're dividing by this? Uh, just note that uh, dividing by 43,000 in this instance is actually creating a very small number and when we're dividing by that very small number we're getting some very large numbers in return. So let's continue. 25 divided by that mess gives us 3.95 times 10 to the power of 9 multiplied by s to the power of 2 plus our s to the power of 1 term which equals 3 point three six nine times ten to the power of thirteen uh, multiplied by s plus our very last term here which is quite large and is equal to three point five nine times ten to the power of eighteen okay so there we have it we have our transfer function so you might be wondering, what's a way to check that this is correct? I mean, there's been a lot of math so far. It'd be pretty easy to make a small mistake. Well, one way to do it is to use a tool like MATLAB, which can plot the frequency response of your filter. And luckily, that's what I've done. So here is the frequency response of our filter. Just as expected, the pass range looks right from high 30s to low 50s, which is the pass band expected uh, from our calculations. So now that we have our filter, we could go about putting it into our system. Oh, but wait, we do not have a digital filter. We are currently using an analog filter. So we could build a little circuit outside of our computer and pass our microphone input through it. However, something that's far more simple would be to create the digital filter. Uh, we can do that in software on the PC and it's not very difficult to do. And luckily there is a tool in MATLAB to do that called Bilinear. Now in a previous example, we calculated the bilinear transform of a transfer function. However, in this instance, uh, it's very complex uh, just due to the high degree powers of S. And the procedure is essentially the same for this as it was in that. The only thing that's ugly is the algebra. Luckily, we have MATLAB. So, once performing the bilinear transform, we get H of Z, our frequency response of our digital filter, and that's equal to 0 0.0104 minus 0 0.02072 times z to the power of negative 2 and remember this is just a delay plus 0 0.01042 times z to the power of negative 4 so hopefully you can see from this already that when you're converting a higher order analog filter into a digital filter, it requires more delays in order to operate in a similar manner to that of the analog filter. And then for our denominator, we have, leave a lot of space for this one, 1 minus 2.49 z to the power of negative 1 plus 3.31 z to the power of negative 2 minus 2.13 z to the power of negative 3 plus 0 0.73 times z to the power of negative 4 and there we have it we've got our digital frequency response we can now go generate some software chuck that into our computer leave our microphone recording somewhere and detect whenever there is a cedar wax wing within range uh, and happy days 
Okay guys, that is all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that you stuck with us through all of this and uh, if you liked the more practical example, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can often go through many years of schooling uh, and a lot of the work is theoretical. So there are many uses for signal processing uh, besides just audio. However, audio is a great way of showing uh, pretty simple examples. If you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.